What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Tan, Ray Mello. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, May 9th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a great Mother's Day weekend. One of Rock's longest marriages has ended. Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne have split up after 33 years of marriage. He needs reported the breakup, but emphasized it has nothing to do with Ozzy's battle with substance abuse as he has been sober since 2013. The couple hit a rough patch before Ozzy kicked drugs and alcohol three years later, but maintained they were committed to working on their marriage. No reason was reported for their recent mutual decision to separate, and the couple has not yet publicly commented on an E story. Ozzy and Sharon met in the early 70s when Ozzy was the lead singer for the heavy metal band Black Sabbath. Sharon later managed the group. The pair married in 1982 and went on to have three children, Amy, Kelly, and Jack. They started the reality show The Osbournes from 2002 to 2005, and Sharon is currently a co-host on the Emmy-winning chat program The Talk. Black China is, is pregnant with fiancé Rob Kardashian's baby, the couple announced on Instagram. Using a special emoji showing the pink-haired model rubbing her belly, China cleverly tagged her bow and added a baby face and celebration emoji in the caption. Minutes later, the 29-year-old Kardashian shared the same pic, adding both a baby face and bride emoji in the caption. This will be China's second child and Kardashian's first. The couple announced their engagement in April using social media to break the news. Since the engagement, those close to the couple including China's mother and model Amber Rose have expressed their excitement for the two. China and Kardashian began dating in January. Previously, the bride-to-be was engaged to Kardashian's half-sister Kylie Jenner's current boyfriend, Tigger. The rapper and China are parents to a son, three-year-old King Stevenson. Alden Enreich will reportedly play Han Solo in Disney's forthcoming Star Wars spinoff. News outlets confirm the 26-year-old actor is in final negotiations for the role, with Page Six reporting the movie will begin filming in January 2017. Enreich was first linked to the role in March. Uh, an insider said of the actor's casting, Alden really impressed Disney and Lucasfilm's execs with his screen test. The deal is basically done. Enreich beat out Kingsman star Taron Egerton and Transformers Age of Extinction actor Jack Ryder. Harrison and four originary Han Solo in Star Wars in 1977 and last played the character in Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015. Star Wars spinoff which will be directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller who co-directed 21 Jump Street and The Lego Movie. Lawrence Kasdan who co-wrote three Star Wars films and son John Kasdan will pen the script. The elder Kasdan said of the movie's plot in January, it will not be here's where Han was born and this is how he was raised. I think what it will be is what he was like 10 years earlier maybe a little earlier you'll get a glimpse the Star Wars spinoff opens in theaters May 25, 2018 but Enric would May 1st appear in Rogue One a Star Wars story out December 26 Miller shared a photo of Han's iconic blaster Wednesday on Twitter in honor of May the 4th Enric made his film debut in Francis Ford Coppola's drama Tektro in 2008 and has since appeared in Beautiful Creatures Stoker and Blue Jasmine he last starred in the Coen Brothers movie Hail Caesar. British filmmaker Tom Hooper has signed on to direct and produce a big screen version of the iconic stage musical Cats. Also producing the Universal uh, Pictures and Working Tile collaboration are Tim Vevin, uh, Eric Fendler, and Deborah Hayward, Entertainment Weekly says. No casting has been announced yet. The theatrical show and its planned film adaptation features music by Andrew Lloyd Webber. It is based on T.S. Eliot's poetry volume, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. A revival of the stage musical is scheduled to open in New York this summer. Hooper's previously films include The Law of Danish Girl, The King's Speech, and Les Miserables. Aaron Sorkin says it would be, quote, a dream come true to work with Idris Elba and Jessica Chastain on his film directorial debut, Molly's Game. Sorkin told Variety the casting of Jessica and Idris in the two lead roles is any filmmaker's dream come true. They're two of the greatest actors of their generation, paired for the first time, and their chemistry will be electric. The actors are in negotiation for the lead roles in the movie, which Sorkin penned. It is based on the memoir of Molly Bloom, who ran a high-stakes poker game until the FBI found out about it. Sorkin 
Lincoln is best known for his TV shows The West Wing and The Newsroom, as well as his hit scripts for the films A Few Good Men, The Social Network, and Steve Jobs. Jesse Peretz has been signed on to direct Juliet Naked, a film based on the best-selling novel by Nick Hornby. The script was written by Tamara Jenkins and Jim Taylor. The project is being produced by Judd Apatow, Albert Berger, Ron Yerksa, Barry Mandel, and Jeffrey Soros. Simon Horseman is serving as an executive producer on the movie, which tells the story of Annie, the long-suffering girlfriend of Duncan, and her unlikely trans-elected role bands with the once-revered, now-fated singer-songwriter Tucker Crow, who also happens to be the subject of Duncan's musical obsession. No casting has yet been announced. Apatow, who has worked with Peretz on HBO's Girls, said in a statement, I'm thrilled to extend my long collaboration with Jesse to this film. He is a master of bringing complicated characters to life with empathy and humor. He's just the perfect director to tell Nick Hornby's great story. Hornby's books, High Fidelity, About a Boy and Fever Pitch, has been adapted as successful films. Peretz has also previously directed the movies The X and Our Idiot Brother. ABC has ordered Designated Survivor, a new conspiracy tr- thriller series starring Kiefer Sutherland. The show will feature Sutherland as Tom Kirkman, a low-level cabinet member who becomes president of the United States after a cataclysmic attack on Washington, D.C. The cast will also include Natasha McElhone, Maggie Q, and Kyle Penn. TVGuide.com reported the news Friday. Fox recently announced it's bringing back Sutherland's iconic TikToking Clock Show 24 with a new lead, Corey Hawkins. Sutherland is an executive producer on the Reboot 24 Legacy. However, it is unclear if he will appear on it now that he has the ABC show. CBS announced Friday it has renewed its popular police procedural Criminal Minds for a full season aired in 2016-2017. This will be the series' 12th season. The small screen drama stars Joe Mantiana, Thomas Gibson, Matthew Gray Gubler, A.J. Cook, and Kristen Van Ness. It follows fictional investigators for the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit, which is based in Quantico, Virginia. Michael Weatherly is dropping hints about his final episode on NCIS. The 47-year-old actor discussed his departure with Extra ahead of the season 13 finale, which marks his last appearance as Tony DiNazio on the CBS series. Uh, He said, here's what I can tell you, part of him dies. Uh, He said when asked if DiNazio will be killed off on the episode, I do know that there is death, sudden death. He added, I hope that everybody out in fanland understands that this was the natural way for DiNazio to leave. DiNazio leaves NCIS the same way he came, which is my cryptic little puzzle message to fans. Weatherly announced his intent to leave the series after season 13 in January, saying he couldn't have had more fun playing Denazio. The actor has already landed a new CBS pilot, Bull, which is based on the early career of Dr. Phil. While he said of his exit to Entertainment Tonight, the character had to leave at some point. I should have left years ago, but I was having so much fun I overstayed my welcome horribly, like that guest who won't leave and keep digging into your fridge. NCIS showrunner Gary Glasberg previously revealed Cote de Pablo's character, Z- um, Ziva David, will absolutely impact Nazio's decision to leave, but the actress later denied she will return in person on the episode. The season 13 finale airs May 17th. Louis creator and star Louis C.K. says he doesn't know if his celebrated sitcom will return from its hiatus, and if it does, it, what it might look like. The show has been on a break since its season 5 uh, finale aired in May 2015. The comedian filmmaker said in an episode of the Hollywood Reporter's podcast that was posted Saturday, I think the guy that I played on the show, the just-divorced kind of underwater dad struggling New York comic, I don't think I have stories for that guy anymore. He'll say, I but the show is autobiographical, so what FX president and general manager John Landgraf and I have always thought is that it may come back with a different set of stories from a different angle a little further down the road. And I don't know where that's from yet, so it just depends on if it writes. I think for me, if I'm on TV again doing a single camera show, it's Louie. But I don't know. I have no idea. I needed to not know if I'd ever do it again. I needed to feel that way. So that's the way I feel right now. I don't ever want to do the show because I owe another season. I don't think that's fair to anybody. CK recently wrapped the first and likely one season of Horace and Pete, a website he created and co-starred in with Steve Buscemi. 
Empower co-creator Lee Daniels announced via Instagram that one of the show's co-stars had gotten married. Daniels captioned Friday's Instagram photo of the happy bride and groom. Rhonda got married. Congrats, Caitlin and Devin. Uh, more Empire children getting married. People Magazine said that Caitlin Doubleday and Devin Lucian were married during an outdoor ceremony in Big Surf, California. The couple announced their engagement in May. Empire co-star Grace Geely and Trey Byes tired the knot last month. Dana Carvey returned to Saturday Night Live as his iconic church lady character this week to blast Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump and his former competitor Ted Cruz. The always judgmental church lady joked about Trump. We landed on the exciting presidential matchup between a godless liberal Democrat and Hillary Clinton, who joked about Trump before welcoming Satan as the first guest on her religious-themed television program. The current SNL cast member, Taryn Killiam, as Cruz says, you can actually just call me Ted Cruz. The church chat host told him, I'm terribly sorry about that. I was just quoting one of your colleagues, Teddy. Don't get it in a bunch. Uh, quickly moving on and asking him why he thinks he ca- his campaign ended in defeat. Cruz replied, I suppose the American people weren't ready for a candidate with strong Christian values, someone like me who follows the righteous path and lives his faith every blessed blessed moment. The church lady inquired, has anyone ever told you that you're just a little bit peachy? That's that happy superior face because we love Jesus more than anybody. She went on to dub Cruz Ted Man Walking while she called Trump an orange mannequin in the Tangerine Tornado. Welcoming Daryl Hammond as Trump to her show, the church lady suggested he chose Satan as his running mate, a cue that prompted the reappearance of Cruz fresh from a trip to hell where he was transformed into a horned demon. Trump quipped, you're the first guy who got possessed and looks better. Brock has journalist Megan Kelly and champion skier Lindsey Vaughn were among the well-dressed attendees at this weekend's Kentucky Derby horse race. Vaughn wore a cleavage-bearing off-white dress, while Kelly chose a black frock from the high-profile event. Both women ascended their ensembles with large beige hats. Kelly shared on Twitter photos of herself and with not only Vaughn, but also rocker Richie Sambora, who wore a move tuxedo jacket over a black t-shirt. Ninquist won the race. Former Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps posted on Instagram Saturday the first photo of his newborn son. Phelps captioned his black and white family photo. Welcome Boomer Robert Phelps into the world. Born May 5th, 2016 at 721 p.m. Healthy and happy. Best feeling I've ever had in my life. At Nicole.M.Johnson and Boomer both healthy. The picture shows Phelps bare-chested and cradling his baby boy who is wearing a tiny knit cap. Phelps' longtime fiancé model Nicole Johnson can be seen watching them from her hospital bed with a smile on her face. And Jenny J. Wow Farley and husband Roger Matthews have welcomed their second child. The 30-year-old television personality announced she gave birth to a son in an Instagram post Thursday revealing she and Matthews named their baby boy Grayson Valor. Farley wrote, So blessed to welcome our precious son, Grayson Valor Matthews. He arrived healthy at 6.03 p.m. tonight, and the most beautiful part is Roger got to deliver him with our doctor. Our family is complete. Matthews said on his account, I would describe the experience like doing three back-to-back combat tours in Iraq while winning the Nobel Peace Prize simultaneously. What an amazing experience to literally witness the miracle of life from the very onset. He added, He's our little man, our perfect bundle of joy, the baby brother to an anxious little girl, Ray to meet her Bubba. What a ride this thing called life is, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your love and support for our newest chapter. Farley and Matthews are already parents of 20-month-old daughter Melina and married in October. The couple announced they were expecting again shortly after their wedding, saying they couldn't ask for more and were on cloud nine. Uh, Farley's rapper confirmed in the statement, Baby Matthews made an appearance today at 6.03 p.m., weighing 7 pounds and 2 ounces. He is healthy and Roger and Jenny couldn't be happier. Jennifer Lopez champions a rebellion against gender roles in her latest music video, Ain't Your Mama. The 46-year-old star released a clip directed by Cameron Duddy Friday morning on YouTube. The video opens with J-Lo having a tense phone conversation with her man in a secluded alley before sitting in front of a camera for for a formal address. Then soundbites from Hillary Clinton and other influential women are heard speaking out in support of equal rights and equal pay. She tells the camera, look, I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everyone knows things are bad taking for granted, ignored, overlooked, underappreciated. We have a big, big problem, ladies. First, you got to get mad. Lopez represents several type of women, from a 1950s homemaker to an influential modern-day TV anchor. In the music video highlighting men's taking advantage of their work throughout history. In the end, Lopez rallies a large group of women 
for a march in the city streets where she dons a white bodysuit and boots designed by Rihanna for the final scene. Harry Styles may not be so hairy anymore since posting an Instagram photo suggesting he chopped off his famous long locks. The One Direction singer posted a photo of himself holding a braid of hairs with his thumb.